a number of different uh, statements. He talked about Rwanda uh, three times, actually, uh, in this uh, press conference. And also this one, where he wanted to make sure everyone knew it was he was not making an analogy. I'm not drawing uh, an analogy to World War II, other than to say, uh, when London was getting bombed, it was profoundly unpopular, both in Congress and around the country, to help the British. Uh, doesn't mean it wasn't the right thing to do, to bring the uh, analogy closer to home. The intervention in Kosovo, very unpopular. But ultimately, I think it was the right thing to do. And the international community uh, should be glad that it, uh, it came together to do it. It was an interesting news conference, Charles. I don't think you've ever seen a greater display of uh, indecision, ambivalence. Sometimes you can use studied ambiguity to scare the other guy to make it useful. With Nixon, it was said that the Soviets thought he was so potentially nuts that actually he deterred a lot of action because you never knew what he was going to do. But he could do um, damage and he could be decisive. With Obama, we've never seen that. The only action he's taken that was decisive was tripling the number of troops in Afghanistan. When he announced it in the same sentence, he announced that we were leaving. So he announced ambivalence, ambiguity, uncertainty. How do you send a nation into war when you are clearly unsure? And the ambivalence he has about the Syria operation has been on the table for two years. He says Assad has to leave. He doesn't act. He says there's a red line. He doesn't act. Everybody understands that he ran in the region. And that's why a lot of people, including me, who would support a president who is committed here, who was serious about this, and who had a plan and a strategy, are saying, can we really entrust an opening into a civil war uh, with a president who clearly doesn't want to be on the scene? That's why he's gotten no support internationally and no support at home.